Tonight on 30 Minutes. We explore whether tattoos are becoming more acceptable in our society. If someone gets closer to you, you know you're a very cool person, but everybody with tattoos, they believe they're very hard people. Why would you judge a person just because they have art on their face? Could getting inked up put your health at risk? After doing it, I was feeling pain. Wow. My nose was swelling. And the worst part of it is this. After everything, I now have the darker lips. People can react to the ink being used for to create the, the tattoos. Is tattoo ink recalled from America and the European Union being used in Nigerian tattoo parlors? Will having a tattoo hinder you from getting your dream job? If, for instance, you have two million to put in the bank, five million to put in the bank, and you see a tattoo bank manager, you know, coming into your and say, "Hand me over your five million naira so I could go put it in the bank for you," would you do so? Could it be possible that the tattoo industry is unregulated in Nigeria? You no know, inspectors. No, no, we don't have that in Nigeria. Nigeria don't have that. In Beautiful to some, hideous to others. But whatever the aesthetic arguments, tattoos are surging in popularity in Nigeria. But before you get inked up, you should wise up. Know the risks involved and how to limit the chances of getting a permanent mistake. A good tattoo shouldn't lead to any health issues and a good tattoo artist will ensure this. But without proper regulation, how do we restrict the actions of those not skilled in tattooing from doing so? I'm Eno Alfred, and this is 30 Minutes on Cool TV. There are many reasons people decide to get tattoos. Some people want to look like celebrities. I don't want to go there. Others just want to impress their friends. But when David got his first tattoo, his reason for doing so was very different. I grew up in the family that they, they do tattoo. So though it's, okay. a, it's a local one, they, they, there's a, the way they do it, they do it with a needle. Okay. Yeah, this needle, yeah. As so, in parents, siblings? Yeah, 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 family, let's say relative. So I love it right from childhood. So I never thought I'll, I'll be having one. Like David, many Nigerians are deciding to get permanent body art. Today, you may be surprised to discover how many of your colleagues or friends are sporting a tattoo under their shirts and ties. While tattoos in Nigeria may seem like a passing fad, the practice is in actual fact an ancient tradition within our culture. Nigerians and Africans in general have been marking their bodies to associate with their tribes and gods a long time before Eminem got a tattoo. Traditional tattooing in African culture was a series of intricately designed patterns that carried major cultural implications. Tribal lineage, maturity, spiritual protection, political, social status and personal strength were all indicated through the art of African tattooing. In fact, you could say that the Western world have imitated our tattoo culture. What has changed during the history of tattoos in Africa is the motivation behind getting them. Gone are the days where tattoos displayed the strength of the inner character. Today, many Nigerians have tattoos that have little meaning. So I did tattoo because I love tattoo. That is why I did it. I have a problem showing it in the church. Can you wear this kind of no, shirt? No, no, no. Actually, formally, I don't do it. I go on with long sleeve. So uh, something happened two months ago. Uh, the church I was going, they, they secure a, a land, their own permanent site. So we are asked to go and clear the land. So going there, I can't go on long sleeve. So I have to yes, pull up. So I just say, OK, let me show my reserve. I say, I told the pastor, there's something about me that you don't know. One day you'll find out. I say, okay. what's that? I say, don't worry. So something will make me to show myself. So I just have to pull up the cloth. So everybody will just. 
Everybody focus, they, they, they just focus on me. Perhaps you've been dreaming of getting a tattoo for as long as you can remember. But without a good tattoo artist, your dream tattoo could become a nightmare. Chibazar recently began working as a tattoo artist at Tiana Styling in Lecky, Lagos. According to him, some of his previous clients include Burner Boy and Davido. I spoke to some celebrities that felt like we would never get a tattoo done in Nigeria. They feel they have to go abroad. Why do you feel people believe you can't get a good, safe tattoo in Nigeria? In Nigeria, we have um, a couple of tattoo artists that are really good, you know. So if you really take your time and find out, and because I think because tattoos are personal things, it's not something you see all the time. So you, you don't really know who is having a tattoo or who is not. For me personally, this is how people come to me when they see my works, you know. Okay. Most times they don't believe it, that it was done here. But not all celebrities are convinced. DJ Sose, most famous for his facial art, doesn't have as much faith in Nigerian tattoo artists as Chibozo does. I haven't seen any, like, proper, proper tattoo parlors which have been accredited by the WHO and, okay. and all that stuff. Because obviously, in the UK, in Europe, in America, Far East, all these places are, like, under strict... Um, laws, rules and regulations of how, how clean it's meant to be and all that because when you're talking about the skin it's a really sensitive aspect yes. of the body so in Nigeria I can't say that yeah I've seen any place or tattoo parlor that is up to standard in terms of what I've seen outside the country so personally no I wouldn't go you wouldn't have it here. no I wouldn't get it done here the truth is, there are many risks involved when getting a tattoo that many people are not aware of. Aside from potentially being stuck with a permanent mistake, not going to a reputable tattoo parlor could be what leaves you with an infection or even a disease. Aside from discussing the designs, what else do you do to ensure they'll have a good tattoo at the end of the day? Well, for you, your equipment... You have to sterilize them properly. Then the other equipment, like the machine, you, know, you have to sterilize it properly. Sterilized equipment isn't the only thing to look out for when selecting a reputable tattoo parlor. Here's a mental checklist to make. Did your tattoo artist open a sterile needle in front of you? Are things like inks and ointments portioned out for individual use? What kind of aftercare products are offered? So let's go back to when you had your first tattoo put on your arm. Did the tattoo artist wash his hands or her hands, put on gloves, show you a sterile needle? Actually, I didn't ask so many questions about that. David is fortunate to love all of his tattoos, but unfortunately, it's not guaranteed you'll have David's luck. So now that the procedure is done and dusted, seriously, do you have any discomfort whatsoever? Are you in any kind of pain? No. At all? At all. So what happened? You just woke up today and decided, I want to have pink lips. Yeah, why I decided to have the pink lips is this. One, I'm not good in making up. Oh, I just okay. want to look natural. But this is your first time ever having, you know, permanent makeup put on? No. You've done it before? I've done it before, but what I did before was rubbish. On your lips? Yes. What happened? Uh, I can't explain, but after doing it, I was feeling pain. Wow. My lips were swelling, and the worst part of it is this. After everything, I now have the darker lips. So you went in for lighter lips and you came out with darker lips? Yes. Wow. And what did you do after that? Is that how you came here or you went back to them? No, oh, I was driving along here. So I now saw the Bieski tattoo, whatever. And I was okay, let me try my best. And when I came here, I now asked off who is in charge of it. They now told me that 
is a lady. I said, wow. <laughs> that made you happy. That was my first time of okay. hearing it or okay. seeing a lady doing such kind of thing. So uh, I decided to come and meet her. We negotiated, though I appreciate what she did. As you can see, we are all here. You looked, you watched over everything she did. So to be sincere, yes. it's not painful. It may sound crazy, but it's true. In a quest to have lighter lips, some people turn to tattoo artists. The procedure may be called pink lips, but since a tattoo gun, a needle, and tattoo ink is used to achieve the look, how different is that from a tattoo? No bleeding, no pain. Whatsoever. At all. Because I'm seeing the tattoo gun, I'm seeing the ink. Yeah. So in my eyes, it looks like you're tattooing her lips. Yeah, but it's not the same. It's, it's not, not the same. same. Yeah. But you do go through any yeah. layers, some layers. Like I said, it's just a light shading. She'll barely feel anything. It's not painful. Taiwa, a tattoo artist at Busy Aski's Tattoo Parlor in Lekki, Lagos, specializes in pink lips, tattooing, and even removing tattoos. She may see pink lips and tattoos as different, but when it comes to necessary safety precautions, she treats them in equal measure. But what if something else other than equipment could damage our health? What if tattoo ink could cause cancer? It can. Across the world, some tattoo inks have been recalled due to scientists revealing some of the ink's ingredients could lead to cancer. We wanted to make sure that the ink Taiwo used for pink lips was safe to use. So we cross-checked it with the latest recalled ink. Tattoo Warehouse's cherry bomb color wasn't there. But when we looked deeper into the company, what we discovered was shocking. Tattoo Warehouse is a dealer of intense tattoo ink. Dark purple, dark advanced black and grey, dark tone and cherry bomb all have recall warnings. Could it be that tattoo artists are using dangerous ink here in Nigeria? We email P. Win Lu, the director of Tattoo Warehouse, to voice our concerns. I wanted to know if Tattoo Warehouse is selling the same product recalled since your website says you are the authorized dealer of intense products. She assured us the tattoo formula had changed. As to my knowledge, that is a while back already. After that, intense have changed the formulas for all their tattoo ink so that it will be safe. But we wanted proof. So she forwarded us an email sent to her and all dealers of Intense Tattoo Ink in May this year with instructions from Mario Barr, CEO of Intense Products. Along with developing a new website and packaging system, we are making changes across board to elevate our brand so we can offer artists and customers a safer and higher quality product. I am requesting you offer a 15% discount on all intense products until we unveil the new brand. In gratis for your compliance, we will support you with the following. Place an order with intent from April 15 until the promotion ends and get 15% additional product of your choice. Sounds like they really wanted to get rid of their tattoo ink before the ink product was unveiled. But when would the unveiling happen? It is still intense and it is still with the same label, but the formula inside has slightly been changed and is much more better. So basically, there's no way to distinguish between the old intense and the new intense that has a new formula. Not really. According to my information from intense, is that all the inks that have problems with it have been recalled and destroyed. So the inks on our market now are all safe to be used. But what if all of it wasn't destroyed? What if some of that ink made its way into Nigeria? And who in Nigeria is regulating the tattoo industry to answer any of these questions? How do you make sure that you have the best equipment, the best ink for your clients? I think over the years, we've been doing this for a couple of four years now. And, um, you know, through experience and how we, we get to know which ink is better than the other. So, but our ink and intensives come from the US. Okay, have you had any experience with any bad ink? Mm, none that I can remember of, none. Okay, and you know, you said your equipment and your ink is of top standards. Yeah. But have you ever had anyone come to, you know, make sure that it is good? Any, you know, 
anyone looking around at what you do to ensure you're doing the right thing? Yeah, NAVDA came around early this year. Okay, they came this yeah, year? Yeah, to inspect and haul. Was it, do you want me asking more about that visit? Was it one person? No. Did, okay. Yeah, they were like three to four. Three to four. And what did what kind of questions did they ask you when they um, came? They checked the vicinity, how clean it is, and the procedures we'll have to carry on before we can get a tattoo done. And it was all clean and nice. Okay. Do they give you any kind of documents to show? I mean, I'm thinking if I'm a client and I come in, being able to see that, okay, NAFDAC have said, giving you the go-ahead, mm. it would be good to, you know, be able to see that. But do they... Do they give anything? That you uh, not really, not really, no. But for Diallo, a tattoo artist in Surulere, Lagos, his interaction with regulators has been entirely different. You see, it's not everybody that has this machine or everybody that opens a tattoo shop yeah. that knows how to do it. Okay. No. It's not everybody, but people think when you just have a tattoo shop, you just you walk just in, and you them. two just bring out your machine and do <laughs> shits on them. Yes. You understand? They will be carrying it around that they have a tattoo. They all, you know Nigerians, when something comes out, something comes out in vogue, everybody they wants it. Wants to do it. And then how do we check to know if these tattoo shops are, you know, legit or not? Have you ever had, say, someone come and check your tattoo Never shop had. to make sure what your, your equipment is right? the ink you're using, any kind of questions from anyone? Uh, not really, I think this is the first one. Really? No inspectors? No, no. We don't have that in Nigeria. Nigeria don't have time for that. There are, there are better things they want to do. <laughs> what they think, change. you know, so they don't even come around, they don't even talk about it. The US Food and Drug Administration considers the inks used in tattoos to be cosmetics, so regulate the tattoo industry. Here in Nigeria, NAFDAC regulate cosmetics as well, so surely at the very least, they too should regulate tattoo ink. We contacted the agency's public relations officer in Lagos to find out. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Christie. It's Enel from Cool TV. I had called you a few weeks ago about the tattoo stuff we were talking about. Ink is ink. We don't regulate ink. That's what I've told you. Okay, so now... I, I don't know. Nafta don't regulate ink. So that's why I don't know. We regulate cosmetics. Ink is ink. It's ink uh, cosmetics. In, in some countries, like in America, they count ink as cosmetic, so they regulate it. Is ink oh. considered cosmetic in Nigeria? Ink. Oh, ink is not cosmetic. Okay, so who regulates the ink then at all in Nigeria if it's not NAFDAQ? Standard organization. What about, you know, the tattoo industry as a whole? Is it regulated by NAFDAQ at all? No, no, no. NAFDAQ, it seems, does not regulate the tattoo industry. But is that because the Standards Organization of Nigeria does? Well, some does require tattoo ink exporters to obtain a product certificate and a certificate of conformity. These are given after the exporter's application is reviewed and products are inspected with sample testing. Thus, it's difficult for bad tattoo ink to be shipped into Nigeria, but not impossible. And bear this in mind. Record tattooing can be brought in not only by ships but by air as well so if NAFDAQ and SON aren't checking to make sure no bad ink is being used in Nigeria who is? Diallo has no license to prove he's qualified to tattoo people he has no certificate that indicates his parlor is safe enough for people to be tattooed in but that's because he's not required to in Nigeria with just a few clicks on the internet you could be the owner of a tattoo gun, needles, and even ink that has been recalled across the world. Most of what you need to get a tattoo, minus a qualified tattoo artist. And guess what? Anyone can order these items legally. Having a bad tattoo artist could not only be bad aesthetically, it could also be bad for your health. There's also something called 
granulomas that can form in tattoos. It's the body fighting whatever it is there. Okay. So it can be seen as like burns and blisters and it will be very, very itchy. And then, of course, something that is very common in our parts in Africa, that's keloids. And what um, keloid basically is, is just your cells, your scar tissue multiplying more than normal. So if you know that maybe your mom or your sister has keloids, you don't want to do yes before having a tattoo done. There are also some blood-borne diseases that you might want to consider. So, of course, you want to consider things like hepatitis. We have um, three types that are blood-borne. That's B, C, and D. If you have a blood that is infected with hepatitis B on this table, you can stay here for up to six months. And, of course, the most dreaded HIV. It's very possible to have a tattoo without health implications and one that you'll love despite the pain. All over the world, tattoos in many places are idolized. But what about potential employers? Are they willing to put up with them or are they simply put off? I love Navy, so I decided to join them. So when I went for the training, so I was disqualified. I said I have because tattoo of on me. Tattoo. I see, but I work. I watch all these uh, American movies. There they, they are so many of the navies, the, the army, they have tattoo on them. If you're thinking about getting a tattoo and like David, dream of joining the navy, you may want to think long and hard before you do. For many professions, ink can be a career stain. Workplace tattoo policies vary among and within industries. In the West, many contemporary companies stress commitments to diversity, which makes tattoo increasingly unproblematic across the board. Even the wife of David Cameron, the UK's Prime Minister, sports a tattoo on her ankle. But T-I-A. This is Africa. At Poise Nigeria, a protocol and etiquette school in Lagos, presentation is of the highest importance. Imagine you going into a doctor's office, for instance, and you have a fever, and you see this hulk of a man seated behind this table with tattoos okay. on his... I mean, he's wearing this um, vest type of um, top with tattoos on his arms and you know, up to his neck. Would you feel uncomfortable? Would you trust him with even paracetamol? If he was known to be a good doctor, imagine someone recommended him. Would you refuse him attending to you? I think um, the stereotype of what I believe a good doctor should look like will prevail. I would start to wonder, am I in the right place? And attitudes are changing slowly. I feel people are becoming more acceptive of people expressing themselves. And people mm -hmm. say perhaps Nigeria might be on the verge of seeing doctors, perhaps, or lawyers, or even consultants. That's with true. Tattoos. I agree. I mean, for the sake of um, diversity, um, maybe, but I still beg to differ to the, uh, that in certain industries, it would take the grace of God. Don't let the simplicity of getting a tattoo motivate you to get one done. While getting a tattoo may seem like a good idea in the spur of the moment, over time they can lose their attraction and relevance. And guess what? It's harder to remove a tattoo than it is to get tattooed. The first time any client is coming in and is coming for tattoo removal, one of the reasons why they do consultation is because you want to find out how do their skin react to specific things. Now, the calibration is also very important. Every laser machine has a calibration. The way you should judge it is that when you shoot it and the pain is so much, you are more or less using it to destroy pigments. So there are collateral damage. So you are supposed to take certain precautions, which I'm not going to say because that's my own information. I'm not supposed to educate them. Share. Yes, I'm not going share. to share that. Anybody that wants to uh, have a lesson on that should come in for training. So there are certain precautions that are supposed to be taken, uh, which include making sure that the skin is cool. I'm telling you already, the skin is cool. I mean, well, it's important for people to know. Yeah, but you know, that's the whole essence of them going to see the professionals not just anybody on the road. I know there's a lot of them in Ikeja on that bridge, you know, where they will be, people will be running after you and say, do you want to remove your tattoo? There are certain rules that actually guide a laser room 
you know, I realized that none of those rules are actually followed. A laser room must not have a mirror. That's one. Then the doors, there must be indication, okay, there's a laser going on here. So you can't just pop in, into the room. You know, you are supposed to wear protective goggle. But apart from that, on the skin also, there are certain measures that have to be taken on even the skin that you are about to shoot laser on. I did my certification in South Africa where everything is regulated because when I was there, they have to send my name to the Ministry of Health that I was there uh, for laser training. You have to pay a certain fee in order for you to have the certification. So now you know the cost, health risks and consequence linked with getting a tattoo. The big question is this. To ink or not to ink? The decision to get a tattoo should not be made lightly. You may be able to remove your tattoo if you want to, but know this. It will cost you a lot more to have it removed than having it done in the first place. Unfortunately, keloids, hepatitis, B and C and HIV cannot be erased as easily as a tattoo. In order to avoid these diseases, you must be well informed. But it's not enough to just be informed. We all deserve to know that the tattoo industry is regulated. In America, the Food and Drug Administration regulates tattoo ink. And in the UK, a tattoo artist must register both themselves and their premises with the local council before they're given a tattoo license. But what tattoo regulation do we have here in Nigeria? I'm Eno Alfred. Join me again next week for another episode of 30 Minutes on Cool TV.